and and undergraduate um, students. So e EAP. Oh, okay, okay. So EAP entails academic discourse competence, and according to Bruce, this includes, for example, assignment genres, um, subject epistemologies, and processing and creating texts, including textual grammar. Um, EAP also in, uh, entails academic processes and values, for example, dispositional and cultural knowledge, such as academic integrity, modes of communication and course delivery, plus um, student, um, auton uh, student autonomy development. And as Highland asserts, EAP is not seeing students uh, as uh, students' difficulties as linguistic deficit, but attempts to acquire new literacy and new communicative practices. And this involves new ways of behaving, interacting and thinking about the world. So it's seeing it as a social practice. To me, um, critical EAP also encompasses uh, critical perspectives because this provides the EAP profession, and I would also add students here too, with space in which to reflect on the wider social and political impl implications that occurs in classrooms, enabling a profound self-awareness for the tutor and the student and their role in the academy and society. To understand um, the concept of sustainability, the students were exposed to several definitions from different perspectives. However, the definition we agreed upon is where the concept of sustain sustainable development was initially mentioned in the 1987 report, Our Common Future, which is commonly known as the Brundtland Report, and where it asserts that um, sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations um, to meet their own needs. However, this definition is not without its critics with respect to the emphasis on development, which is generally aligned with growth and expansion. But nevertheless, it is the most cited um, definition and promotes responsibility for future generations. So the students decided this was the uh, best definition of the understanding of sustainability that we were going to go with for, 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 the, mod, for the module. Now moving on to language for engineering. This is a six week summer pre-sessional course with students from receiving schools of computer science, electronic and electrical engineering, chemical and process engineering, mechanical engineering and transport or the Institute of Transport. And this course was developed in collaboration with colleagues, that's the academics in the receiving schools. And we agreed that it was a perfect opportunity to establish the concept of sustainability at the heart of this program. So as time is of essence, because I can talk loads about this, I'm going to go straight to the content of the program by outlining three examples um, that we covered in this six week course. So uh, one was one task was where the students under uh, took a piece of um, stage writing which fed into their summative assessment the literature review this re this task required the students to produce a piece of writing using their prior knowledge and understanding of sustainability in their discipline area and this was used also as a diagnostic task to enable the tutor to support and offer guidance in addressing the individual students' weaknesses and, and highlighting their strengths. And this piece of writing undergoes um, three iterations in total. And at each iteration, the student is instructed to develop the piece of writing into a more coherent piece by enacting the learning that uh, had taken place in class. So for the second iteration of this writing task, they were required to include sources, both readings and audio uh, that had been covered thus far in the programme with a maximum word count of 500 to 600 words. And this iteration required peer feedback. And the challenge here was that some students were 
vocal in their skepticism that peer feedback would be beneficial as it lacked the authority of the tutor. Um, research shows, indicates that peer feedback has a robust impact on student performance and could be implemented as a formative practice to improve um, academic performance. The students did take to it um, once they realized that they were also giving them an opportunity to rethink their work as well, ha having given feedback to, to a peer. The third iteration entailed at least three additional um, sources that the students had researched with respect to their discipline and the concept of sustainability. The word count was kept the same, 500 to 600 words, primarily to reinforce um, that writing requires several drafts where whole sections may need to be revised or discarded. And this final iteration was graded by um, tutors. At the end of um, week five, the students undertook the living lab task. And this consolidated their knowledge and newfound understanding of sustainability and further reinforced how sustainability, sustainability connects with their um, disciplines. The living lab is the university campus itself where the university is a test bed for innovative and creative sustainability solutions. And it also enhances the curriculum and helps to tackle global challenges, <clears throat> excuse me, at a local level. So the students were divided into groups by their choice of one of the eight living lab themes. And these are the themes here. And what the students had to do was they had to grow, they had to work as a group to find out why is the chosen theme relevant and what is its broader context? Who and what does it affect? Does it affect everyone, everything equally? And which um, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, is it most closely related to? And how might this issue or this theme affect and be affected by the university. So they needed to think of the university really broadly. And as we were continuing this course, they also um, begin, began to understand that sustainability is very, very broad and encompasses many, many, many um, types of different um, areas. Um, and they also were asked to consider their time during the at the university and contribute to sustainability around their chosen um, issue. And they were encouraged to think really creatively and, and ambitiously, and, um, and it worked out really well. And this was a one day project. And after they'd done their research, they had to then um, um, give, presentations to other groups on their newfound knowledge about that particular theme. The next task was on language for engineering was um, the weekly reflective groups, which consisted of five cross-disciplinary students. And this was timetabled on a Friday. And the reflective groups had agency with respect to making their own arrangements when and where to meet. The aim of the reflective discussions was to collaborate in a group discussion and critically reflect on the week's study. These were structured where the students start by checking in with each other about how they are feeling at that precise moment and their expectations from the discussion. And then it moved on to the critical self-reflection of the week's learning, which is scaffolded with prompt questions to ensure Students actually reflect and not and not just um, um, describe. And this led on to an activity on the Padlet where their response to this activity is informed by their group discussion. And they always ended the um, discussion by checking out with each other again. How do you feel now at this moment at the end of a session? And were your expectations met? And if not, perhaps reflect on why not? Um, 
these smaller reflective groups were also opportunities to organically evolve into communities of practice so they were able to engage in peer learning as well. Um, moving on to um, language in context for sustainability, this was, student cohort was a mix of post and undergraduate uh, cross disciplines and it was an elective module. And its primary purpose was to provide the students with a deeper understanding of sustainability, which went beyond the predictable answers of saving the polar bears or the rainforest or its recycling. And it was, uh, and we did this by means of developing the diverse cross discipline students' understanding of the concept of sustainability in its widest sense and how it links to all the disciplines, whether it be art, science, technology engineering and how it impacts on their everyday lives. Additionally, it was also to develop the students' criticality skills um, and their confidence and their lexis to take part in sustainability conversations as and when they arose, and not only in their disciplines, but in their daily lives too. In developing the module, the secondary aim was to ensure that sustainability wasn't just at the periphery or a bolt on to a lesson or a syllabus, but it was an integral part of a curriculum. As mentioned in previous um, um, talks, the 17 um, SDGs were applied as a framework to relate to the concept of system sustainability to students, various disciplines and their future studies. And to develop criticality and the language to express it, Daw and Ryan's article on the three-legged stool model was introduced to the students um, to get, for them to gain an acute appreciation of the tension between the three pillars of sustainability, the environment, society and economy. Um, here again, I'm going to outline three outputs that impacted the real world. So one of the reasons for students' successful engagement with this module was that it was connected to the real world in an authentic way, such as delivering presentations at conferences and publishing. Um, an aspect of sustainability module um, involved students in a project that further widened their understanding of uh, sustainability. They were introduced to the language of activism in the classroom and the role language plays in contemporary activism. It was linked to the students' contribution to the 2023 Plastic Free campaign. Um, and it was quite fortunate actually, because we have a gallery at this um, university. And at that time when this particular um, iteration of the module was delivered, um, the gallery had an exhibition called Still Life, Things Devouring Time. And it was all about um, everyday litter that had been taken and turned into various uh, types of art and sculptures by various artists from across the country. And the students really enjoyed this um, and gave them a different aspect of looking, um, sorry, a different perspective of looking at engaging with litter. However, um, the, some students were still saying that, um, complaining that they had no creativity because I'd got some funding to do some kind of something substantial um, connected to this um, campaign. So we used Lego bricks and um, <clears throat> to stimulate students' creativity and what they were asked to, in groups, to use the Lego bricks to create a, a representation of what sustainability means to them or their understanding of sustainability. And one particular student after, after the um, Lego um, activity, the students were um, uh, work, worked in a cross-discipline um, uh, small groups and collaborated on producing different pieces of art using the um, repurposed single use plastic, which they got from around the campus. And one particular student um, produced two planets, the blue planet and a planet absolutely 
littered with litter. And while these exhibitions were going round across the campus, the 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 blue the planet with covered with litter was slowly slowly losing its air so as it was going around it the globe became quite diminished so it was a very good metaphor of the you know individuals didn't start didn't start taking seriously and implementing sustainability into their day-to-day -day living look this is what could happen to the planet or what is already happening to the planet and the students also produced um um you know artworks such as a flock of birds um and this was uh inspired by david attenborough's albatross chicks little clip that had ingested quite a lot of plastic and obviously um they didn't didn't live um and also we had this sustainable tree which again did its rounds across campus to engender conversation about a plastic free um, single use plastic free um, campus. Um, in the module students were also given opportunities to highlight their language in authentic ways to a wider audience. In the 2020 iteration of the module, the, the participants rose to the challenge of um, uh, submitting um, abstracts to the call for papers for this um, conference at the university and two groups of students um, were successful with their abstracts and one delivered a poster presentation about their journey into um, sustainability and another group um, presented or delivered a presentation uh, on different perspectives of sustainability were specifically connected to their disciplines or their postgraduate study that they were going to do go on to next. And another tangible um, outcome was um, the students did a blog and this blog was assessed by a student and tutor panel and one of the students blogs uh, on their personal engagement with sustainability was published in the institution's sustainability uh, blog. And reg regarding um, not just the conference, but also um, this particular module, the students had really positive um, student comments and some, and this particular one, the student was um, really um, excited that they had never realized that the work that they were doing in the classroom could go beyond the classroom and that his uh, this particular student was a guy so his um, um, you know um, work shows that his voice can Im Im influence um, I just want to finish by um, um, emphasizing that criticality as understood by Barnett and, sorry, Davis and Barnett, um, critical thinking, which um, widens by looking at it as criticality and, and in it, it embeds critical thinking, critical self-reflection, critical action, which reflects the different domains of knowledge, self and the world. And my teaching is also influenced by Banesh's critical EAP, by this, I mean, the classroom is not a neutral neutral place. It's very much a political a space where the student voices need to be heard. And I also draw on elements um, such as reading against the grain and thick description in my approach. And I use Wendland et al's thick critical thinking to engage students to go beyond the binary viewpoints and, and encourage considerations of nuance and ambiguity, taking students out of their comfort zone. Um, and reflection or student self-critical reflection plays a huge role on both these programs. For example, the weekly reflective group discussion that I mentioned and in the National Student Service, that group reflective discussion was uh, one of the highlights of that course. And because it was about community, belonging, collaboration, implementing criticality and reflection, which enhanced their experience on the program. And um, collaboration to make a difference in the world is essential to collaborate. And in my teaching, collaboration takes place in many different on many different levels. For example, students working together in partnership with tutors, 
student collaboration with the wider community or students collaborating on projects such as uh, diverse cross-discipline students working together to promote the 2023 Plastic Free campaign or by cr uh, creating art installations. Um, you know, even though some students kind of think that they've no creativity with a little bit of stimulus, a little bit of input, you know, how wrong they were because these art installations were a huge success and definitely impacted on this conversation. Thank you very much and happy to respond to questions. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, any questions? There's so many, I'm still digesting, there's so many things like this. <laughs> I, I, I kind of condensed it really <laughs> much. I wanted to, again, because there were so many activities. Um, I mentioned to David and Kathy just before um, everyone else joined that this presentation is based on a paper that I wrote. Um, I can put details on it. So if anybody's interested, because that goes into way more, way more detail. Um, Kathy, yep. oh, Hania. sorry, somebody had that. Um, Hania. Hania. Thanks. Yeah, first time for a quick one. Um, yeah, it, it's um, very fascinating and quite a lot of variety of tasks that the students got involved in. I was just wondering whether you've got information about any changes, any practical changes that students were able to make in their in their lives or whether the university um, facilitated uh, let's say an application of this knowledge that they'd gained um, because a lot of it is very theoretical you know some of the ideas you presented they're quite theoretical and very kind of creative and artistic but in in a practical sense were students actually able to make practical changes um, or encourage others in some way yeah honey I'm glad you asked that question because there was something else I was going to add in here but again time constraints um on the um sustainability module language in context the students also from the very beginning kept a journal a log so each week um, they would, as they, and we had three case studies on fast fashion, every drop counts, that's to do with water, and there was another one, plastic. Um, and the students were keeping a log and reflecting on what we'd covered in the classroom and any if anything that we'd looked at impacted on them in their daily lives. And it was quite curious because we had um, a group of Japanese students and a couple of them were saying that they were practically washing, using their washing machines every other day. And having had this every drop counts um, and that, things about microplastics and all that kind of stuff they now said that they only use the washing machine once a week so there's been lots of little things like that that students have um, impacted um, across the wide sector of the university sustainability is very much now because I started working on sustainability um, not as an add-on but more as a, um, a core element of the courses that I've been teaching since the, I think it was 2016 or 2017, but over that time, slowly, um, sustainability has been taken very seriously. And it's now, uh, as I'm sure in most institutions, it's part of a key um, university um, strategy that's broken down, yes. And we also have lots of other activities connected to our sustainability unit that we signpost students to get themselves involved in. We've just done a, a, a big project on planting trees since um, January up to March. So that was really interesting as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think we're gonna have to wrap up there because we are slightly overrun and we need to- Yeah, sorry, it took too long to sorry. respond to that question. <laughs> no, it's been wonderful, wonderful talk. And like I said, so many brilliant ideas um, for us to, to share and, and to try and Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Kashmir. Thank you. If you could share that paper with us, that would be that was my question. If you could yes, share that um, actually, I will email it I'll tell, to you. I'll I'll sorry, it this, this is this is one of my articles, which is not open access. So what I'm going to do is I will add a PDF. Okay. So in case 
the institutions don't have access to it's a European journal I don't I forget it's got a full full title that I can never remember so I'll attach it as a PDF Fantastic. Um, yeah Thanks okay so That's yes great. yeah okay great thank you so much thank you so I think we've got a few people who have arrived for the next session already oh stop share stop share <laughs> I'll stop recording yeah I will